We had to move everything around to have the new carpet put down this week, and it was a um, it was a major task getting getting everything put back. Uh, we're not sure we have everything in its proper place yet, but we've got most of it. And there was a group of people who came to help uh, vacuum the pews and clean and put things back. And you know who you were, so just let you know that we do appreciate it. Uh, also, next Sunday, next Sunday morning at 7 o'clock, the men will be having their uh, men's breakfast. And uh, if you are a man from this in this church, uh, you are invited and maybe even slightly expected to be there for breakfast and meeting. So just don't forget Are there any other announcements that need to be made for the good of the congregation? Well, if not, will you pray with me? Christ our Savior, you call us by name. You lead us from death into eternal life. Awaken and unbind us by your word so that we may live and grow in faith sharing your saving love with others for you are truly the resurrection and the life amen will you stand for the life
Any other praises this morning? Um, Mike Sick. at work that had surgery. Uh, he's coming back to work tomorrow, a whole week early. So we are saying him how to One that that shoulder? <laughs> yes. That's good. Yes. The lady that we were praying for that had the shoulder surgery that Cynthia worked with, I know she didn't get the microphone yet. She came back to work a week early, so it is a praise. Praise for the whole team. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I smell something. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes, it is. It looks the same, but it's not. <laughs> so it we got is. the Lord's Supper up here, so it won't stain. That's right. Or the grave. Oh, oh, good. So you just spilled the blood everywhere. That's yeah, Jesus uh, shed it for us. You know what says that? Okay. Any other praises? Good to see everybody. Sandy what does. Sandy has a praise. <laughs> <laughs> I have a praise. Um, Wesley did not have to have dialysis last week, so that's two weeks in a row. So. <laughs> Maybe you'll take a look at the uh, prayer list in the back of your bulletin and uh, let me know if there are other <laughs> prayer concerns or updates. I have one name we need to add to our prayer list. It was listed in here as uh, uh, already as a uh, former student of Donna Reed's, but her name is Natalie Chapman. She was uh, injured in a car accident, which uh, resulted in two, two fatalities. So uh, this young lady is um, gonna need physical healing, mental healing, a lot of other healing. So if you would, please keep her lifted up. Uh, and I'll update on Pat. 
She's still having her surgery on Tuesday on her back. And uh, she needs lots of prayers for that. She's nervous about having her throat. Okay. We'll keep Patty Stroud lifted up. <clears throat> Marky. I had a mammogram done last Monday and the doctor called me this week and told me that they had seen something on both sides. Uh, they're wanting to do ultrasounds on both sides and extra testing. Uh, me and my brother Michael are leaving on a trip to London on Tuesday and we'll be gone a week, but once I get back, they're gonna set up all the tests that needs to be done. We're praying that, it, that it's nothing, but we will. Yes. We'll keep you lifted up, absolutely. Kathy. Uh, if you'll remember, um, prayers for me, please. I have a fourth treatment on Tuesday, and then also prayers for Nancy and I. She takes me to my treatment. So safe travels to Charlotte and back. That's Tuesday, right? I want to be sure I lift you up on Tuesday morning. And um, last week I had asked prayers for Billy Parsons. Uh, he's the one that had the cancer throughout his body. Well, he passed away on Friday. So just remember his family. It was totally unexpected because he didn't know that he had the cancer until he went for another procedure. So it was a shock to him. What was his name again? Billy Parsons. <laughs> he also used to be the custodian and bus driver up at West, so people might know him from there too. Okay. Folks, let's go to the Lord in prayer. exactly what you call us once we put our trust in Christ thank you for receiving us into your family thank you for receiving us like lost sheep back into the fold we thank you father for seeking us out just like a shepherd would seek out the lost sheep or the woman seeking after a lost coin in the parables you show us how much you value us that you do not leave us on our own in our lost state, but you seek after us that we might turn to you. Help us to appreciate the joy that fills heaven over each sinner that repents. Help us to share that same joy. Help us now that we are walking with you to be among those who join you in seeking the lost sheep to bring them back into the fold. We know that there are many others, many other prodigals, much like ourselves, that need to return to you. 
Give us the privilege of seeing the lost stand and returning to you. Help us to see that they are worth the cost and that the effort to search for them and invite them back into your house is well worth it. Heavenly Father, we pray for all of those that they may be, that are on our prayer list, that they may find healing and restoration. Bless them in body, in mind, and in spirit. Grant them strength and courage as they face these difficult times. Dear God, we ask that you would give them the peace and the comfort as though you were with them right physically. They may get through these challenging times of sickness, loneliness, depression, and sorrow. We also ask for your blessing on all those gathered here today and on this church. For we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Amen. And at this time, we will continue our worship service with the receiving of God's tithes and our offerings. You may bring your offering into the back or to the front while the choir sings. <coughs>
accept our tithes and offerings of the gift of worship to you, O Lord. Multiply what we give for the effective growth of your kingdom. May Christ dwell in our hearts through faith, so that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may have the strength to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge. May we be filled with all fullness of God. Amen. And you may be seated. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us as we read the scriptures together. Come, bring your understanding and reveal your truth. Come open our minds, our hearts, and our souls to all that these words of life offer us. We long to be continually challenged, continually transformed, and renewed by your word. May we hear your voice of life as we read and draw close to you. Amen. And let me get the kids right up here. somebody one time at the end of a school year and they had a bunch of stuff in a box that had been in the lost and found. They had things like one shoe. Now, how in the world do you lose one shoe and not know it? They had things like glasses. Now, if other people are like me, they would know if they lost their glasses and be looking for them, but apparently they did. They also had some things like uh, lunch boxes, uh, one earring, a necklace, a few things like that. Now, I'm wondering, have you ever lost anything that was valuable to you? Mm -hmm. Did you just say, oh well, I'll just get another one, or did you look for it? You searched for it. That's right. Um, well, our Bible lesson today talks about a person who had lost something valuable to them. And that's what they did. They searched for it. Jesus told the story about a woman who had had 10 silver coins. Each coin was worth about a day's pay. And so she went to get her coins and she started counting. She said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's all. She said, oh no, I've lost one of my coins. So what did she do? That's right. She lit the lights in the house and she searched and she swept and she kept looking until she found it. And then she told her neighbors and friends to celebrate with her because she had lost, she had found her lost coin. Now Jesus told that story to demonstrate how God loves us. You see, we're God's children. But sometimes we get lost. Sometimes we do things we shouldn't. God doesn't give up on us. He searches for us and keeps searching until he finds us. In fact, the Bible says that when a lost person is saved, there's rejoicing. Jesus said that in the, that there is great rejoicing in the presence of God's angels when just one sinner repents. I'm glad God loves us that much, aren't you? I'm really glad. 
that he doesn't give on give up on us and that he keeps looking for us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are your children and you love each and every one of us. And we're thankful that you don't give up on us even when we don't do right. When we get lost. Lord, keep looking. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. from Luke 15, 1 through 3 and 8 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repeat, repents. The word of God, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Salvation is a gift. But while salvation is a gift, it is not without cost. It's given to us freely, but it cost Jesus everything. And there's also a cost associated with searching for the lost. You know, the the lost. That's the people that don't recognize their need for a Savior. Mm -hmm. And they still want to live life on their own terms. Now the question remains, are they worth the cost? I want you to do me a favor right now. I want you to think about all the people around you, your family, your friends, your co-workers, and tell me, do you think they're worth it? Now, while salvation is a gift, it is not without cost. It is given to us freely, but it costs Jesus everything. It's, he sacrificed himself for us. And there's also a cost for you and me when we follow Christ. You see, there are way too many people who want to say they live the Christian life, but they want to do it without any sacrifice, without giving up anything. But there's a lot more to it than that. For instance, in saying yes to Christ, we are saying no to a lot of what the world has to offer us. There's also a cost associated with reaching out to the lost, those who have not recognized their need for a savior and those who are still living on their own terms. If you look at Luke 15, eight through 10, you'll see what I mean. It says, what woman having 10 silver coins if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, search carefully until she finds it, and when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace that I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. What's the first thing that woman did? After she counted her coins and realized one was missing, she lit a lamp. 
First, it costs you resources to look for the lost. The text says that the woman lit a lamp to look for that coin. Now, you may think that's no big deal. But you've got to remember, in those days, you couldn't go just flip a switch and light up the house. She had to light an oil lamp. Because most of their houses didn't have windows. There was no natural light coming in. She had an oil, light this oil lamp, and that oil was not cheap. It was expensive. So she used some of her resources to hunt for that coin. <coughs> she spent her resources. And then, then she swept the house. So not only does it cost us our resources, it also can cost us time to look for the lost. We read in verse 8 that the woman swept the house until she found it. She searched. Now, whether that word sweep literally means taking a broom and sweeping the house, or whether it means searching inch by inch, both reflect a significant labor, intensive investment of time just to seek for that one lost coin. She did it without hesitation because its value was what? Was great enough for her to keep looking. And then it says she searched carefully. You see, looking for the lost is going to cost us some thoroughness, some patience. That woman searched carefully until she found it. She looked, she searched, she cleaned, she looked again. And she did that over and over until she found that coin. As long as it took. As much as it took. There was an emotional investment there for her. After one failed search, she did it again and again. Until she found what was precious to her. So yes, there is a price to be paid for reaching the lost. But the question remains for us. Are they worth it? Yes. Again, stop for just a moment and think about all those people around you. And tell me, are they worth it? Well, of course they're worth it. In fact, our text today tells us that those souls are so precious, the souls of those around us are so precious and so important that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Have you ever brought help bring someone to the Lord? Have you ever been able to say you had, had a hand in him causing someone to repent. There's a reward in that. You see, every soul is precious and needs to be hearing the message of hope of Jesus Christ. He paid the ultimate price for you. So ask him to help you to extend yourself to reach others. Amen. In response to the word, we will celebrate the communion. The, the, uh, the words to this service are on page 12 in your hymnal and will be on the board, the, the screen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin for God and one another.
Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit and let us gather here and own these gifts of bread and wine. May them, <clears throat> make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Let me try to put my glove on.
The table is set. Won't you come? We are blessed to be a blessing. Are your neighbors worth it? Search for them. And take the good news to the world. Go in peace and love. Amen.
as you follow Christ, as you become his disciple, you also become one of the shepherds of their soul. Looking for the lost sheep is your job. see the smiling faces as I serve the Lord so I know you're a family you are the family of God and if you have lost your way grab a hold of your hand we'll show you the way back that's good news take it to the Lord Peace and love. Amen.
and rejoicing in heaven over one, just one sinner in repentance. So let us join in that re rehearsal, that repentance, that joy. Dedication is the 90 and 9. Please stand in sing.
Go forth in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen.